The purpose of this build is to demonstrate how a sixth order bandpass enclosure operate, particularly a parallel sixth order bandpass. The goal of this build is to prove that a sixth order bandpass build are better suited for sound quality and not SPL. To do so, I will compare a base reflex enclosure or a ported enclosure built to manufacturer specification against this parallel sixth order bandpass. So now that you know the purpose of the build and the goal of the build, what is the purpose of this video? Well, the purpose of this video is to dispel a myth that sixth order bandpass builds are better suited for SPL than a simple ported enclosure. In short, this is a sixth order bandpass versus base reflex. Hopefully, after seeing my approach to both these type of enclosures, maybe you then be inspired to construct one or the other on your own. If you would like to help out the channel, you can find affiliate links to any items featured in this video in the description box below. Any purchase made through those links help support the Budget Base Head channel and allow me to keep bringing you guys even more content such as this. Okay guys, so right now I'm back here in the studio, I should say my living room. Shout out to my wife for letting me do this stuff without cussing me out, right? I got my tone generator here and I'm gonna let you guys see exactly how this thing behaves and let you guys also get a peek at the airflow on the inside of it to see what port is activated. Now, a little bit about the enclosure. This chamber right here, very thin and almost like a transmission line, right? Hopefully it behaves like one. But anyway, so this is supposed to be tuned to around 50 hertz, meaning that it'll take anything like low 40s all the way up to like 80. This here is like a daily driven port. I know it's very, very long, but that's what the, the software called for, so that's what I built. Over here is my 30 hertz port, meaning it'll catch everything from the low 20s all the way up to around the mid 40s or so, supposedly. So it'll fill the gap where this one starts to fall off or, or roll off in terms of upper frequencies. This one would catch and take it all the way to like 80 hertz. You know what I'm saying? And when this one starts to fall off or roll off on the lower frequencies, this one here would catch it and take it all the way to like 20 something. So you got a bandwidth of around low 20s to like mid 70s. Very, very efficient design for a parallel six order. I love these enclosures. The only thing I hate about them is the size. But it's, with, with these little guys, I can build them all day and let you guys see how they function. And that's what we're gonna be doing now with the base sweep. So we're going to take this base sweep. I'm going to start at 80 hertz. And I'm going to start the test there. There you guys go, confetti everywhere. Hopefully I got all of that on camera for you guys. Um, just for the hell, it blew all of the confetti out of that port. <laughs> and then look at this, everything's like in the corners and stuff. It's snaking its way out of here into this port and it's really doing some stuff. Pretty amazing, what do you guys think about that? I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to give it a, another go and let you guys get another shot at that. Let's do this again. So we're gonna do the, the, the uh, subwoofer test again and I'm gonna try to get it where you guys can see the whole piece.
And yes, I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh man, you hear some hissing or something going on with the top. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a very thin top, so you're losing a lot of acoustical power. You know, that's not what this is for. This is to show you guys how this thing works. And from the looks of my floor, I think you guys get the point. These things are highly efficient, okay? If you build one properly, just use WinISD. That's what I do. Following this graph right here, and that's exactly what this thing does. All right, guys, as you guys can um, can see, we, we're back here in the lab, and what I'm going to be doing is displaying to you guys the true potential of the sixth order by playing some music. Now, I know that some of you guys may wonder, why would you build an enclosure like this that plays down into the 20s, right? Well, some people um, listen to that genre of music that plays into the 20s. Believe it or not, some people like it tuned very, very low, uh, where some people like it very, very high bass. And then you, then you got the sweet medium. An enclosure like this will give you all three. Okay, okay now... Honestly, this can be tuned a lot higher. I could have went with like 60 hertz tuning here, 30 hertz here, which meaning they have been like a half octave apart. Or in this case, it have been a whole octave apart, right? 30 to 60. And that would have caught a whole lot of everyday music bass. But if you're someone who listens to like low uh, like decaf type music, or if you wanted to use this in a home theater system where you wanted to... Uh, listen to some music, which this port would catch all, most all type of music, and you would like to get your rumbly feel in your home theater system for your movies and stuff. So this would be the port to catch all of that, all your your sound effects like the uh, the explosions, the monsters stomping through the jungle. This is what this would be. This right here would be most of your music, your everyday stuff. So. What I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to be playing a song. I can't tell you guys exactly what song this is because I'm going to try to remove all the vocals from this song. But it's a very famous bass, heavy bass song that a lot of YouTubers play. Hopefully you guys can catch and uh, recognize it for what it is. And it plays down into the 20s as well. So over here we have our AM, AMM1. Multimeter. This is an audio multimeter by Steve Mead Designs that partnered with Demore Engineering. Pretty cool tool, and it's gonna show us our real-time power. Giving us power would be the S the uh, Tariums MD8000.1. No, I'm not gonna be sending 8,000 watts through this little bitty subwoofer, and we're simply gonna be running it off my cell phone. Okay. So this is your car audio equipment. This is the setup. I'm not going to go into the power bank and all that stuff. We can talk about that later. For right now, I'm just going to hit play and let you guys see what, what this thing is about. Twenty something. 30s. 30s right there. 20s over here. And guys, that's barely 100 watts. Let's give it a little juice. There it is, y'all. 
It then blew everything out of that port. I gotta refill it. Epic bass drops. I think you guys get it. And yes, you do hear a lot of port ch uh, chuffing right now because these are not rounded over yet. It's not ready to go in the car just yet, but that's the next time you guys see it is going to be in the car. And it's also going to have a three quarter inch uh, MDF panel on top. It's not going to have this in the vehicle. This enclosure is amazing. I ca it can be improved. Uh, for my daily listening, I would actually shorten this port and bring this tuning up a little bit more. And I would also do the same on this port right here. I would probably take out this entire wall. It'll bring that tuning way up to around 30 hertz or so where I, where I really needed that. Because right now it's, it's actually lower than 30. It's like 20 something. But um, anyway, listening to movies and stuff, amazing. This is a box, not only for the home theater system, but for some base heads for sure. Okay, as you guys can see, I do have the three quarter inch MDF top on the enclosure now. So we should get a whole lot more of a response out of this enclosure because we now have something to actually contain and, and route the acoustical energy. No energy is going to be lost with that three quarter inch MDF up there. So the port should be a lot more activated now. What we're going to be doing is giving it another sweep and we got the tissue test going on right here. Just a bunch of tissue in front of the ports to give you guys an indication of airflow. So we're going to do a base sweep from 150 hertz down to 20 hertz. <laughs> So we're going to give that another go. As you guys can see, this thing is very, very responsive in between the upper 40s and lower 20s. Very, very responsive for both ports. So let's give that another sweep and we'll move on to the trunk next of the vehicle. Once again, sixth order band passes are very, very efficient. Particularly, this is my most favorite, you know, of the sixth order designs is the parallel sixth order band pass. It's highly efficient. And as you guys can see, this can easily be used for daily driven systems or your low down, deep, deep bass systems. As a matter of fact, I've actually incorporated a couple of these in my home theater systems, and they do very, very well on everything, to be honest with you. Uh, enough of that. Next test is going to be the vehicle, uh, where we put it in the trunk of the Impala and put some power through it. All right, guys, so we're back here in the Impala, and as you guys can see, I got the base meter in the kick once again. We're going to be giving this guy a base sweep from 150 down to 20 hertz. And there it is. Little baby sixth order right there, front and center in the trunk. Right now it's forward facing, so you're not going to get the best reading out of it. But I just wanted to kind of test what volume levels I need to have this thing at so it doesn't destroy the subwoofer inside. 
I don't expect big numbers from this. I mean, it is a six and a half inch sub in a two chambered enclosure and it's not built for SPL, it's built for low frequencies. Okay, we got the SMD AMM1 audio multimeter. This is gonna be me uh, measuring our real world power. Yeah, and yes, it's raining. I'm out here very dedicated to you guys right now. All right, like I stated previous, we're gonna be doing uh, 150 down to 20 hertz and we're gonna be measuring, monitoring the power over here. So let's get this started. So this particular amplifier is the, this is the audio pipe APMN 2000. This guy here does have a steep roll off at around 30 hertz or so. But let's look at the, the base meter. It has a 126.3. I'm actually shocked to see that much on here. But let's see at what frequency did we get that reading? Ooh, it's hard to do this with two hand, one hand. All right, 126.3, and we got that at a 36 hertz. That's where it peaked in that moment at 36 hertz. If you guys can read that, it's really hard to capture on screen. There we go. That's the angle I need. Head on is kind of hard. I'm going to be turning that guy around, and we're going to see what we get loaded off the trunk. Uh, that's coming up next. Give me a moment. All right, guys, so we right back at you again. The only thing we did was turn the subwoofer enclosure around. That was it. So we're going to run that test again. 150 down to 20 hertz. And we're going to see what results we get on the base meter. All right, 36 hertz is what we got. We got a 127.1. So there you go, guys. A lot of I've been trying to tell a lot of people that sixth order band passes can be made into an SPL build, but that's not what they're really for. Uh, sixth order band pass is to it's, it's to increase your low frequency extension. Every comparison video should have a control unit. So what is a control unit? In this case the CT Sounds Meso 6.5 needs to be compared against what the manufacturer recommend for it before you can judge what you customly built for it. The reason that I'm bringing the control unit into this video is because I want people to fully understand that sixth order band passes, though they have been built for SPL competitions, that is not their primary purpose. The primary purpose of any bandpass enclosure is lower end extension to increase the bandwidth. Going into this experiment, I do expect the ported enclosure, SPL wise, to do a little bit better than the sixth order. But in terms of bandwidth, frequency response, lower end extension, the sixth order is going to win hands down every time. And for our control unit, we're going to be using this enclosure. This enclosure has an internal volume of a quarter cubic foot. It is tuned to 42 hertz and have a vent area or port area of 12 cubic inches. That is eight inches by one and a half inches 
with a total vent length, get this, of 72.3 inches long. Okay, so we have the CT Sounds Meso in a enclosure that is actually built to manufacture specification. So we're gonna be testing this to see exactly what response we get, what SPL score we get, and this score and this test, the performance of this enclosure is gonna be used as a control in all the other videos that we have. Using this Tone Generator app, we're gonna be doing a uh, bass sweep from 100 down to 20 hertz. All right, so let me get the tone going. All right, so now we're gonna check the uh, base meter and see where we peaked at. And wherever we peaked at, it's gonna be where we run our school. 38 hertz is where we peaked. And I must be honest and say, guys, I smell this subwoofer, which I never have. But in this case, I smell it. Which is kind of weird because of all the tests I've done with these little guys, I never smelled it before. But here it is in an enclosure built for it. And I smell it. It's kind of weird, but anyway, we're gonna get the tone generator at 38 and we're gonna continue this. All right, so we have the tone generator set at 38 Hertz. And there's the setup. I'm gonna see if I can bring it up to its max, which is 800 watts and see what score we get. All right, here we go. this as you guys can see it's reaching its uh, mechanical limit meaning that it's bottoming out before I can get it to its max I don't want to kill it it's already smelling so let's just see what score we got behind that so there you have it that's a 125.2 DB 125.2 and let's check the frequency again it says 39 hertz. So I'm going to reset it. And I'm going to bump this down one. And then I'm going to rerun the test. Let me get the SMD restarted. All right, I'm going to give it um, another go of this. And these are back to back, which can be a bit hard on the subwoofer. But hey. That's why we do this, right? So we're gonna give this, reset the gain control and give it another go. All right. Okay, once again, wasn't able to completely max it out, but we did get a higher score. That's a 126. 126 guys that's where it's at i'm gonna leave it alone i don't want it to burn up um it's smelling a little bit too bad for me so i'm gonna leave it like that so what i'm gonna be doing now is turning it around and see if we can get a better score from that and just keep keep eye on the temps and just know my limitation with it can't really do a whole lot with this guy today in that enclosure anyway be right back all right guys i'm gonna try as best i can to keep an eye on that voltage back there bring it all the way up to around 800 and we'll see what we got then let me make sure okay hit play wow sounds a lot better Alright. 
Damn, I hit the wrong button, man. As you guys can see, the damn lead popped out of the SMD meter, but there you go, 128.3. That's nice, man. It's, it's pretty cool how you can gain almost 3 dBs just by uh, loading it off the trunk. That's pretty cool. And of course, there was that 38 hertz. There you go again, 38 hertz is what we tested at. So, not bad. Not bad for one little guy. Sounded really good. Not bad for one little sub. But um, I think he didn't took enough abuse for one day. We're going to get back to the lab and get this video edited for you guys. So there you have it. The ported enclosure was a little bit louder than the sixth order band pass. However, the band pass enclosure, not only did it have a wider frequency range, but it also had better handling, meaning that it didn't bottom out as quickly as the ported enclosure did. Speaking of sixth order band pass, if you notice the enclosure right now on the screen, it looks a little bit different from the ones that was just featured here in this video. Thanks to everyone who stuck around to the end in order to see this enclosure because you guys are getting a sneak peek at what's coming next here on the Budget Base Head channel. What you guys are looking at is a tri-chambered sixth order bandpass. That means that this sixth order bandpass doesn't have two ports, it actually has three ports. And if you guys want to learn a little bit more about it, stay tuned to the next one. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Bass here, and I'm out.